Before entering airport property, a safety meeting should be conducted to inform all field staff of the safety protocol. Also, all personnel should know where the survey sites are ahead of time so there's no confusion. Once at the airport, you should check in with the fixed space operator, or FBO, and let them know you've arrived. Go sign in, let them know who you are, what you're doing, where you're going, and how long you'll be there. When working on airport grounds, you should always have an escort who can provide information as to which areas are safe, if there's any construction, or any other important information. Keep in mind that different airports may have different regulations, so pay attention and listen closely. Also, it is critical that you demonstrate situational awareness when on the airfield. In other words, you must remain aware of your surroundings and anything going on around you, whether that be a call on the radio, a plane landing, or a blinking red light on the tail of an aircraft. Another key to remaining safe when near a runway is having the right safety equipment. Most importantly, this means wearing a safety vest, which increases your visibility and decreases your chance of injury. Constantly stay alert of your surroundings, whether you are a person piloting an aircraft or a person given driving privileges at the airport. If you're going to be driving, it would be a smart idea to become familiar with the FAA Guide to Ground Vehicle Operations first. A general rule to follow is, play it safe, think before you act. A runway safety area, or RSA, is an area surrounding the runway, and it is measured from the runway ends and center line. Much like the shoulder on the highway, the runway safety area is intended for use by aircraft in the case of an emergency, such as if an aircraft were to land short of, veer off of, or overshoot the runway. Thus, the runway safety area should always be free of vehicles and pedestrians. The area can be identified by a painted yellow hold line next to a holding position sign with a red background and white characters. Aprons, also known as ramps, are the areas where aircraft park, load, and unload. If your work requires you to drive on an apron, exercise caution, and maintain a safe distance from the aircraft. If an aircraft were to start its engine in close proximity to your vehicle, your vehicle could be damaged or you could be injured from a hazard known as jet blast. Be aware of a rotating red beacon on an aircraft's tail or underside, which indicate the aircraft's engine is about to start. Runway markings are white, with numbers on each end, centerline stripes down the middle, and sometimes lines along the edge. Connecting aprons, hangers, and terminals to the runway is something known as a taxiway. Taxiways look similar to runways, but they are not as wide. Also, taxiway markings are yellow and utilize letters or letter number combinations as designators. First of all, it's important to review and understand the airport signage and markings. Refer to the FAA Guide to Ground Vehicle Operations for detailed information. Also, you should review the most up-to-date airport diagram prior to moving the vehicle. Have it out and available for immediate reference while driving in the operation area. Talk to the airport manager for current airport information such as runway or taxiway closure, construction activity, or any other risks such as wet or soft shoulder areas. Be sure appropriate vehicle lighting including high beams, flashers, beacons, and strobes are operational prior to driving. Flashers and beacons help air crew and vehicle operators see vehicles in the operation area, especially during periods of reduced visibility, making their use very important. Use service roads when possible to minimize time spent on taxiways and runways. Eliminate distractions when driving on the airfield. Refrain from using cell phones, texting, or engaging in unnecessary conversations. Focus attention on observing all areas around the vehicle, maintaining appropriate speeds, and being alert for aircraft, as you should never assume the pilot can see you. Airport cockpit windows have a limited viewing area so pilots may not see vehicles and pedestrians, particularly behind wings and under the nose. Never stop or park on the runway or taxiway. If you must park, vehicles should be behind the whole lines and in the safety area, clear of the wings of any aircraft. When you approach runways and taxiways, stop, look both ways, and listen for aircraft landing or taking off. Your windows should be open. Note that if you see an aircraft in takeoff position with landing lights on, the aircraft will be departing immediately. If you have any doubts about whether the coast is clear, confirm by radio. If your radio fails while you're in the operation area, visibly clear your route and exit the operation area as soon as possible. Alert others when you are using a taxiway or runway by always making an announcement over the radio. Be specific about your location. During radio transmission, use correct terminology and speak in a clear, concise manner. If any aircraft are headed to you on the same taxiway, move into the safety area and out of the way. Yield them the right of way. If an aircraft is about to land on a runway you need to cross, stop before the whole line and continue to yield until the aircraft has landed and taxied off the runway. Also, be aware some aircraft are not equipped with radio. Aircraft have a set traffic patterns to follow when landing, which are typically rectangular in basic shape with a runway along one side of the rectangle. Each section of the pattern has a corresponding term. 
The upwind leg is the flight path parallel to and in the direction of the landing runway. The crosswind leg is a short climbing flight path at right angles to the departure end of the runway. The downwind leg is a level path parallel to the landing runway, but in the opposite direction. The base leg is a short descending path at right angles to the approach end extended center line of the runway. And the final approach is just a descending path in the direction of landing along the runway. An example of self-announcement over the radio by a driver on airport grounds would be, Wake County Traffic Survey Party is on and about the vicinity of the taxiway. We will remain clear of runway at all times. The objective of the phonetic alphabet is to ensure that important combinations of letters and numbers can be pronounced and understood accurately, despite language barriers or the quality of the communication channel. Committing the alphabet to memory is very important and is something you should certainly do before doing any work at an airport. If you have a handheld radio and aren't driving a vehicle, you shouldn't need to contact anybody. Utilize the radio to simply monitor and keep up with aircraft in the area. The exception to this would be if there is an emergency and you needed immediate attention. An example of a message you might hear on the radio while working in an airport would be, Wake Traffic Cherokee 209 or 0 Whiskey entering left downwind runway 10 Wake County. This is simply the pilot announcing their position to let others know where they are. If you are driving a vehicle, you should always make an announcement over the radio when you're crossing the taxiway or runway to let people know of your location and prevent accidents. You shouldn't get up under an aircraft, move anything on the aircraft, or move around without an escort. Go where you're supposed to go and stay in that assigned area. Remain with airport personnel and stay where they put you. Also, don't go in restricted areas. If there is an accident, such as damage to an airplane or an injury to one of your team members, contact somebody from the airport immediately. Airport personnel will assist in dealing with the incident. If you are unsure about whether to ask for help, play it safe and ask anyway. It's better to be safe than sorry.